I got started in the podcasting space in 2015. Back in 2015, people may have heard of podcasts, but starting your own podcast, being a guest on podcasts, really wasn't as popular as it is today. In 2015, I started my own show, ran it for two years. Then in 2017, I started my own podcast agency where we book people on podcasts. We book guests for their podcasts. We edit their shows. We take their content and create social media content out of it. And going through that process of being a host, hosting my own show, being a guest on other people's show, working with over 400 clients, these are the top tips that everyone should know within the podcasting space. And I'm going to try to cover them both if you're being a guest on shows or if you're being a host. The first thing I wish I would have realized and not been so hung up on is perfection. I found early on I wanted to have the perfect interview. And if someone left a negative feedback on my podcast or if I had an interview and someone left a negative comment on YouTube, you know, I took it very personally. But in the beginning, I should have used that more as constructive feedback and realized at the end of the day, it really wasn't great. I had never hosted a podcast before. I had never guested on a podcast or been a guest on a podcast before. Of course, someone wasn't going to sound great. So I wish I would have just continued on and not let that bother me or anything like that. I wish I would have just kept pushing forward knowing, okay, yeah, this person that's competing, maybe they've never been on a podcast themselves. Maybe they never even hosted a podcast as well. So I have to know that in the beginning, I'm just going to suck. It's not going to be easy. It's going to be hard. And just getting started is one of the hardest aspects because it's super uncomfortable. If you've never been a podcast host and you want to go out there and be a podcast host, or conversely, if you've never been a guest on a show and you want to start to go out and be a guest on a show, it can definitely be uncomfortable from time to time. Another aspect is just being consistent. And what I mean by that is if you're a podcast host, just make sure that if you have a podcast, you're having an episode go out every Monday and you're just consistently sticking to that schedule. If you're a podcast guest, make sure you're doing an interview and you want to be a guest, make sure you're doing an interview a week, maybe an interview every other week. So you're doing anywhere from, say, on average, 25 to 50 interviews per year and somewhere in between of that. You just want to be consistent because I could go out there and I could go on podcasts and do 20 podcast interviews in, in the month, during the month. And that's going to be great. I'm going to see a nice surge of business, great leads coming in. But then at say within two or three months after all those episodes have finally been published, then it's going to dry up. I want to make sure I'm consistent with it. Same thing with being a podcast host. You interview someone or your audience expects you to have that podcast go live today and it's not live today. Then they maybe come back in a week and it's still not live. Maybe you produce a show once on a Monday, then on a Thursday, then on a Friday. It's just all over the map. You just want to be consistent with your audience. You, you want to know that you're going to have to be in it for the long haul. Whether you're a podcast host or whether you're a podcast guest, it can definitely take anywhere from like 6 to 12 months if you're a host and about 3 to 6 months as a podcast guest for you to really start to see results. And that just goes back to being consistent because too many people give up. They say, oh, I'm not seeing the success where... There's like over 2 million podcasts out there, probably even more than that now, with 90% of them never reaching past the 10th episode. So that tells you that people want to see success right away, where if I run a Facebook ad, if I run a Google ad, of course I'm going to see success. I wouldn't say right away, but maybe within a week, maybe within a month, depending on how I treat my campaigns, depending on what type of ads that I'm running or podcasting. It's just a longer process. So you have to make sure that you're going to be in for it and in for a long time. You want to know, do you have a budget? Do you have a budget for either A, hosting your own podcast when it comes to editing it, when it comes to producing the show, or are you going to be doing that on your own? Back in 2015, I was doing it all on my own, and that was perfectly fine. I enjoyed it. I had the time. I was bootstrapping the podcast. Right now, I have, I don't, I technically pay someone on my team to do it, but I would outsource it to someone like our company or somewhere else. If I was starting my own show just from the time aspect of it, if again, if I had the budget to do it and you could be looking at about a hundred to $200 per episode that you're producing out there with different companies that are out there. So you can definitely get pricey and can, the numbers can really start to add up fast. And then if you want to be a podcast guest, yes, of course you can go on and you can go out and you can find shows for yourself. You can write your pitch. You can hire someone to put together one sheet, but 
how do you know it's all perfectly correct? I have to do a trial by error. I was booking myself on shows back in 2015. And when I was running my podcasting business today, really for the first year of working with clients, I was doing the whole process on my own, where now a days I have the team helping me out and they pretty much take care of all of the clients. But I had to put in that work for three or four years of my own, trying to figure out how can I get myself booked on podcasts, then can I, how can I book our clients that I'm now working with to go out there and be on podcasts. So again, you can do it on your own. An agency like ours, the monthly package starts at 1400 a month. Then it goes up from there, depending on how many podcast interviews that you want to do. So again, do you want to have a budget for that? Or do you want to go out there and do it on your own? And at what point, if you're starting and you're just bootstrapping on your own, maybe you have a VA, maybe you have an assistant, at what point could you potentially have it in the budget to go out and hire a company? So these are just questions that you want to be asking yourself. And really the last, let's say two pieces of advice that I'd want to give you. One is being, make sure you have the right equipment. So make sure you have a, just above all else, just make sure you have a good quality podcast microphone. I use the Blue Yeti mic. I've used the Blue Snowball mic. I've used the Audio Technica mic. There's any number of podcast mics that you can use. I prefer, I my preference is the Blue Yeti mic. I find that mic seems to work the best for me. It was about a hundred bucks. The Blue Snowball runs you about 50 bucks, a little more budget friendly. And of course, you can go up and you can spend two, three, four, five hundred dollars on microphone. I'm I'm not hosting like a I want to say a professional podcast, but the podcast I have it doesn't have millions of downloads. It doesn't have thousands of followers or anything like that. So with that said, I'm just gonna keep it simple and I'm just gonna get a nice good quality microphone. And as the show grows, I'm gonna get a better micro microphone from there. And the last piece of advice I'd be was just would be just start just put yourself out there again it's super uncomfortable being a podcast host being a guest for the very first time once you start to go through as a podcast host and you have five different episodes you're going to start to get a little bit better as a podcast guest once you've been on interviewed five to ten times it's going to get a little bit better so those are really my best podcasting tips that I can give anyone I don't want to go super technical I want to go high level over my experience from just really being in the podcasting space for the last nine years.